morning, everyone. Very good morning to all of you. Those who have uh, one thing is those who have writing the exams in the month of November. Most of you would be. Please, you all get yourself registered for the examination, even if you have registered in the month of May. Okay. Because even if you have registered in the month of May, still you would be required to register yourself for the examination in the month of November. Don't forget. Okay, don't forget that. Because uh, many body would have, many people have thought that May examination is merged with November, so maybe my registration stays. It is not like that. You need to get registered again. Please make sure that you get yourself registered again. Fine, so let's start the discussion for the day. So we have waited for two, three minutes for everyone to um, at, come log in and attend the class. So let's start the discussion for the day. So yesterday, our discussion was focused on the overall objectives of the independent auditor and how to conduct the audit in accordance with standards. So we discussed about the overall objectives. We discussed about reasonable assurance. We discussed inherent limitations of audit correct inherent limitations of audit so all these things that we have discussed yesterday and i think we have also discussed points relating to the ethical requirements of an auditor if i am not wrong we also discussed regarding the ethical requirements of an auditor that is integrity objectivity confidentiality professional competence and due care and professional behavior correct i think we have done regarding the uh the, those points also if i am not wrong can you please confirm yes have we done the ethical requirements yesterday did we learn about the ethical requirements of a professional accountant the code of ethics which gives you five ethical requirements yes have we done it please confirm to me Yes, fine. So let's move forward and start discussing on the topic of audit evidence. Okay, let's move forward and discuss the topic of audit evidence. Now, why is topic of audit evidence extremely important? One, for new syllabus students, it is covered in chapter number three. For old syllabus students, understand this is your SA 500. Even for new syllabus, it is SA 500, but this is covered in chapter number three. Now, why the discussion of audit evidence is extremely important? Because for an auditor to express his opinion, for an auditor to say whether the financial statements are showing a true and a fair view, for an auditor to come to a conclusion on whether the financial statements are free from material misstatements due to fraud or error, to reach that reasonable assurance, for everything that the auditor comes to a conclusion or an opinion, he needs audit evidence. He needs audit evidence. Correct. So what exactly do you think is audit evidence? Audit evidence could be those informations, those informations that is used by the auditor to reach a conclusion, to reach a conclusion on which his opinion is going to be based. So whatever opinion that he is going to express, to express that opinion, he will have to reach to a conclusion. Now, to reach to a conclusion on a particular transaction or a particular event, he needs information about that transaction, about that account balance, that is assets, liabilities, whatever it is. So, the information that is used by the auditor to reach a particular conclusion and based on, conclu on that conclusion, you are expressing your opinion. That will be called as what? Audit evidence. That will be called as audit evidence. I repeat, let's see what is audit evidence. It says, audit evidence may be defined. You need to learn the definition. Please understand. Audit evidence may be defined as the information used by the auditor. I repeat, audit evidence may be defined as the information used by the auditor in arriving at the conclusions on which the auditor's opinion is based. I repeat, Audit evidence may be defined as the information used by the auditor. Information used by the auditor in arriving at the conclusions. In arriving at the conclusions on which auditor's opinion is based. On which auditor's opinion is based. So, 
whatever opinion that the auditor will express, he has to reach a conclusion. To reach the conclusion, he needs certain information. That information is called as audit evidence. That information is called as audit evidence. Now comes the most important part. Audit evidence includes both information contained in the accounting records underlying the financial statements and other information. Now it says audit evidence includes both informations contained in the accounting records underlying the financial statements and other information. So it says audit evidence is what it is the information. It is the information used by the auditor to arrive at the conclusions on which auditor's opinion is based. And they say the information that they are trying to explain here, it includes both information in accounting records. It includes both information in accounting records and also and also certain other information. This is accounting records underlying the financial statements, underlying the financial statements and other information. Now, my question is very simple to you. I, I understand this point. What is this point? It says information contained in the accounting records. Obviously, that means whatever information that auditor is going to use, it will be from mostly from which records from the accounting records underlying the financial statements means what the accounting records used for preparing the financial statements. The accounting records means it includes everything, everything related to accounts, be it invoices, be it vouchers, be it uh, journals, ledgers, everything. Inform accounting records underlying the financial statements. But my question to you is, they also say information contains other information. That means there could be some information used by the auditor to come to a conclusion. The information could be other information. What do you mean by other information? What do you mean by other information? Now here it is clearly said it is information contained in accounting records. So when they say other information, they might be trying to tell you it is information other than that is contained in the accounting records. So information other than accounting records. Now, what does this try to say? It says that it is not that the auditor will be examining or focusing only on the accounting records. There could be some times where he might have to access or he might have to examine certain other than accounting records, which could be used for reaching the conclusion and expressing the opinion. Are you getting my point? That means your information is not confined only to the accounting records. Your information is not confined only to the accounting records. It also extends to certain other information. Sir, can you give me, give us any example? Yes. Other information, one of the good examples that we can use for our discussion would be minutes book. Minutes book. I, I hope you have heard about minutes book. So when a meeting is being conducted, whatever happens in a meeting, whatever happens in a meeting will be, uh, you know, uh, in a uh, written in a book. It's a statutory book, which is required by the statute. The law requires you to maintain the book called as minutes book to understand what has happened in the meeting. Now, minutes book is a statutory book. It is a statutory book. It is not an accounting record. But minutes book contains information regarding the meetings. And when an auditor audits the financial statements, listen to me carefully. There could be a lot of situations like loan given to a subsidiary company or uh, de deciding to uh, venture into a new uh, business, new uh, product or many things, you know, directors and decisions of, uh, you know, uh, the dividend. It's like a fixation of dividend. Many things would be done in the board meeting. Okay. And you might go through the minutes of board meeting to get the details of those. Sir, why do you think auditor needs details of those? Because ultimately some of these can affect the financial statements also. So it is not an accounting record. It is an other than accounting record. But it is used as an audit evidence by the auditor. It is used as an audit evidence by the auditor. Please understand. It's a so beautiful definition. It is, says it is not confined just to what accounting records. It also includes what other information. Clear? So here it is said, 
Information contained in accounting records means what? Accounting records include the records of initial accounting entries and the supporting records such as, such as checks and records of electronic fund transfers, invoices, contracts, general subsidiary ledgers, journals. All these are accounting records, cost allocation, reconciliation, worksheets, spreadsheets. Then comes other information. They say other information that authenticates the accounting records. Also supports the auditors rationally behind the true and fair review of the financial statements. Other information which the auditor may use as an audit evidence includes, for example, minutes of the meetings, written confirmations from trade receivables, manuals containing details of electronic con uh, internal control. I'll tell you, internal control. Every organization will have an internal control system. Now to understand how the internal control functions, they might have a manual. That means they might have a book which explains the control system of the organization. Now, that is something which the auditor may use to understand the internal control of the organization. And that is other information. It has nothing to do with accounting records. Are you getting my point? So why are you spending so much time on this? Because if you see, I think recently one of the examination, they asked this question. They asked you to explain this particular aspect of what is contained in accounting records and what is other information. So please understand this is a four mark question. This is a four mark question. Whole thing is a four mark question. You'll have to learn it properly. I'm telling you it's a it's a four mark question which could be asked in the exam. So please make sure that you are learning it. Do you understand? Please make sure that you are learning it. It's a good four mark question. It's a good four mark question. So here it explains what is audit evidence. It explains what is audit evidence. And there are two examples for audit evidence. There are two, uh, no means other uh, two things that are explained regarding audit evidence. Now, next it says, next it says, it says audit evidence Listen to me carefully. Audit evidence must be sufficient and appropriate. Audit evidence must be sufficient and appropriate. Audit evidence must be sufficient and appropriate. So there is a clear a clear understanding that the audit evidence that is the information that the auditor uses to form a conclusion on the basis of which uh, his opinion is based that information must be sufficient and appropriate that information must be sufficient and appropriate enough to express his opinion now if i ask you if i ask you what do you mean by sufficient audit evidence is it quantity of audit evidence or is it quality of audit evidence? You tell me. What do you mean by sufficiency of audit evidence? Is it quantity of audit evidence or quality of audit evidence? What do you mean by sufficiency? Quantity or quality? Quick, come on, come on. Sufficiency is the quantity or quality. It is the quantity of audit evidence. Perfect. This also have, has come uh, for examination. Sufficiency is the quantity of audit evidence. Whereas appropriateness describes the quality of audit evidence. That is quantity and quality. I repeat quantity and quality. So sufficiency focuses on what quantity of audit evidence whereas appropriateness focuses on quality of audit evidence quality of audit evidence do you understand quality of audit evidence you should be very careful quantity quality this could come as correct or incorrect question true or false sufficiency is the measure of quantity of audit evidence whereas appropriateness is the measure of quality of audit evidence quality of audit evidence now so evidence must be sufficient and appropriate. Now, now before going forward, let's try to understand. Let's try to understand the types of audit evidence. The types of audit evidence. The types of audit evidence. 
types of audit evidence the classification could be based on nature could be based on source if you classify audit evidence on the basis of nature there could be three types of audit evidence one oral evidence second documentary evidence third visual evidence visual evidence so classification of audit evidence on the basis of nature would be oral evidence documentary evidence visual evidence okay what do you mean by oral evidence what do you mean by oral evidence i go and speak to the people in the organization and gather information orally gather the information orally by listening to them that is oral evidence that is what evidence oral evidence now what is documentary evidence what is documentary evidence those bills vouchers contracts records which are written or which may be in electronic digital form that is documentary evidence documentary evidence then you have something called as what visual evidence something called as what visual evidence what is visual evidence what do you mean visual evidence where auditor is looking or watching something he is getting the evidence visually physical verification where he watches the process and gets the evidence that is visual evidence that is called as what visual evidence so oral evidence documentary evidence visual evidence fine then comes source source based on source it is either internal evidence then external evidence you have internal evidence and what external evidence evidence generated from within the organization internal evidence evidence generated from outside the organization external evidence so you can see the types of audit evidence or classification of audit evidence on the basis of nature could be oral evidence documentary evidence and visual evidence on the basis of source is internal evidence external evidence you understand very 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 important now let me ask you a question um tell me tell me purchase invoice purchase invoice you tell me the nature and the source of evidence purchase invoice purchase invoice purchase invoice you tell me the nature and the source of evidence both purchase invoice nature and source purchase invoice you tell me the nature and the source of evidence nature and the source of evidence both you tell me nature as well as source nature and documentary nature is documentary correct so documentary is the nature then what about source what about source what about the source and external documentary and external good documentary and external why external because purchase invoice is generated from outside the organization and it is a written evidence so it's a documentary evidence fine so it is documentary and external good so like this questions can be expected huh? like this questions can be expected so please be little careful you can you can expect questions like this you can expect questions like this fine so it is very very important to learn these evidence for example that i imagine i go and speak to the people in the organization so i make inquiry okay i am speaking to the people in the organization i am making inquiries with them in that case it is an oral evidence based on nature and internal evidence 
as I'm obtaining from within the organization. Are you getting my points? You could get this for MCQ. You could get this for MCQ. They might give you an evidence and ask them, ask you what is the nature and the, um, what do you say, uh, source based the classification of audit evidence. So please be a little careful. Now, so evidence is necessary to support auditor's opinion and report. It is cumulative in nature and is primarily obtained from audit procedures performed during the course of audit. It is however, uh, it may however also include information obtained from other sources such as what previous audits. It's a good sentence. It may also include information obtained from other sources such as previous audits. That means what information that you have already obtained from previous audits. What information you have already obtained from previous audits. It could be used as an audit evidence even in the current year. Do you understand? In addition to other sources inside and outside the entity, entities accounting records are an important source of audit evidence. Information may be prepared using management expert and all that we will see later. Then, now it says, as explained in SA 200, now read, read this. Reasonable assurance is obtained when the auditor has obtained sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. So, reasonable assurance can be obtained only if the auditor has obtained sufficient appropriate audit evidence. I repeat, sufficient appropriate audit evidence. The sufficiency and appropriateness of audit evidence are interrelated. Sufficiency and appropriateness of audit evidence are interrelated. Now, what do you mean by sufficiency of audit evidence? Read. Sufficiency is the measure of, I repeat, quantity of audit evidence. It is a measure of quantity of audit evidence. The quantity of audit evidence needed is affected by, one, the materiality. So, the auditor's judgment as to sufficiency may be affected by the factors. So, what are the factors affecting the sufficiency of audit evidence? I repeat, we understand that audit evidence must be sufficient and appropriate. Sufficiency means quantity of audit evidence. So, what quantity of audit evidence should the auditor collect is dependent on certain factors, certain factors. The first factor that affects the quantity of an audit evidence, they say is materiality. They say is what? Materiality. Let me ask you a question. If you feel the transaction that you are examining is material, I repeat, if you feel the transaction that you are examining is material, is what? Material. You will want more quantity of audit evidence or lesser quantity of audit evidence. I repeat, if the transaction that you are examining, examining, imagine is material, you will want more audit evidence or lesser quantity of audit evidence when it is material. Tell me quickly, come on. Come on everybody. Come on, come on. You want more, correct? So, that means when the materiality has now affected your or affected your quantity of audit evidence. I hope you got the example correct. Right? Your materiality has affected the, uh, you know, decision, uh, decision of quantity. Next, risk of material misstatement. What do you mean by risk of material misstatement? If you feel the chances for a material misstatement is high, if you feel the chances for a material misstatement is high, you would want to have more audit evidence. You want, would, you would want to have more audit evidence. I repeat. If you feel the chances for a material misstatement is high, you may want to have more audit evidence. Same way risk of material misstatement will affect the quantity. Next is size and characteristics of the population. Listen, size and characteristics of the population. Now imagine there is a population. Imagine there are some hundred transaction which is the same characteristics. Nothing much of a difference between those hundred transaction. Then maybe you will take little bit of evidence from there and you will move forward. Why? That much quantity is enough because the population is of similar characteristics. But if the population is of different, different characteristics, then you may go for more and more evidence. Are you getting my point? So these are the three factors which affects the sufficiency of an audit evidence. Now tell me my students, let's learn this. 
okay let's learn this i hope you are with me take your notebook have your notebook with you it says audit evidence must be audit evidence must be must be sufficient and appropriate correct sufficiency sufficiency is the measure of quantity of audit evidence quantity of audit evidence correct quantity and sufficiency is affected by certain factors 1 2 3 what is the first factor first factor was what are the first factor materiality second one risk of material misstatement third one is size and characteristics of population you could get a question like this regarding sufficiency please take care okay sufficiency they have clearly given that it is a measure of quantity of audit evidence and factors is three factors fine now what is appropriateness appropriateness is the measure of quality of audit evidence i repeat appropriateness is the measure of quality of audit evidence now what is what determines the quality of an audit evidence to say an evidence is of good quality two things should come together one the relevance of the audit evidence and second the reliability of audit evidence the reliability of audit evidence so i repeat the quality of an audit evidence the quality of an audit evidence is based on the relevance and reliability of the audit evidence how much relevant and how reliable is the audit evidence i repeat how relevant and how much reliable is the audit evidence audit evidence that determines the quality of the evidence the more relevant the more reliable the audit evidence is the more quality is your audit evidence do you understand more quality is the audit evidence now what is relevance of audit evidence what is reliability is what we have to learn i repeat audit evidence must be sufficient and appropriate sufficiency is the measure of quantity of audit evidence appropriateness is the measure of quality of audit evidence sufficiency is affected by three factors one the materiality second risk of material misstatement third the size and characteristics of population appropriateness of the audit evidence is the measure of quality of audit evidence the quality of an evidence can be determined based on the relevance and the reliability of audit evidence what do you mean by relevance the importance of that evidence in the current scenario that is relevance that means when you are checking something related to cash cash book is the most relevant when you are checking something related to sales the sales invoice becomes the most relevant evidence so relevance is the context what is the most relevant information that you can use that is called as relevance second comes reliability so relevance and reliability how much you can trust that evidence that is called as reliability how reliable how trustworthy is that evidence okay now listen carefully it's very simple now next let us learn reliability of audit evidence which is generally a five mark question that is asked in the exam reliability of audit evidence i repeat reliability of audit evidence reliability of audit evidence now what is this reliability of audit evidence now the reliability of audit evidence is dependent on various factors like the source nature etc let's see how now if i ask you if i ask you on the base of nature of audit evidence on the base of nature of audit evidence if you compare written evidence with oral evidence if you compare written evidence with oral evidence which evidence is more reliable obviously written evidence will be more reliable than what evidence oral evidence can you see this now this reliability is uh, determined by the source 
okay if the so sorry not source sorry nature determined by the nature if the nature of audit evidence is such that it is it is obtained in a written format when the written evidence is written it is considered to be more reliable than what evidence oral evidence than what evidence oral evidence next if you compare external evidence and internal evidence external evidence and internal evidence which is more reliable obviously it is what external evidence so external evidence is more reliable than internal evidence when the information is obtained from outside the entity generated from outside the entity the reliability will increase do you understand so here you can see the reliability is determining by, determined by the source of the audit evidence source when the source is from outside the organization the reliability increases when the source is from within the organization the reliability will reduce why because when the information is obtained from within the organization you feel the organization has control over that information so they can make manipulations of that information so that is why when you compare information generated from outside with the information generated from within the organization we always feel information generated from outside the organization is more reliable is more reliable next next listen carefully next however however as an auditor you get a lot of evidences from within the organization even if we say comparing to the external evidences internal evidences are lesser reliable still lot of evidences that the auditor receives will be what evidence internally generated evidence so how to determine the reliability i repeat how to determine the reliability of an internal evidence can you tell me how will you determine the reliability of an internal evidence that is my question how will you determine the reliability of an internal evidence how will you determine the reliability of an internal evidence tell me what decides the reliability of an internal evidence what determines the reliability of an internal evidence no idea what determines the reliability of an internal evidence the internal control superb good dilish that is the answer the internal control good control system visha yes correct good internal control system pandya correct good control system so understand internal control system will determine the reliability of internal evidence how if there is a good internal control system i repeat if there is a good internal control system obviously the organization would be running in a good and disciplined manner in that case the internally generated evidences will gain more and more reliability the better the control system the better is the internal evidence reliability understand so reliability of internal evidence is directly affected by the internal control system determined by the internal control system now which evidence is better evidence obtained directly by the auditor or through the client evidence obtained directly by the auditor or through the client which evidence is better obviously the evidence obtained directly by the auditor is more reliable than obtained through the client evidence obtained directly by the auditor is more reliable than obtained through the client whenever an evidence is obtained directly by the auditor i repeat whenever an evidence is obtained directly by the auditor it is more reliable it is more reliable than obtained through the clients than obtained through the clients next which evidence is more reliable which evidence is more reliable an evidence which is an original document 
or evidence which is photocopies on digital documents the question is very simple which evidence is more reliable evidence which is obtained in original documents or evidence obtained through photocopies answer is very simple evidence obtained through original documents is more reliable than obtained through photocopies digital documents do you understand so these are the five points relating to the reliability of audit evidence one written evidence is more reliable than oral evidence in external evidence is more reliable than internal evidence internal control will determine the reliability of internal evidence directly obtained evidence is more reliable than obtained through the client original documents are always more reliable than obtained through uh, sorry uh, than photocopies or digital documents clear so if you come into their saying listen to me listen what they are saying here see the reliability of evidence is influenced by its source and by its nature and is dependent on the individual circumstances under which it is obtained so they are saying the reliability of evidence is influenced by its source and by its nature and is dependent on the individual circumstances under which it is obtained under which it is obtained now leave all this for the time being i'll show you where it is there in the textbook regarding reliability and relevance of audit evidence yes so you can see here relevance and reliability of audit evidence while audit evidence is primarily obtained from audit procedures performed during the course of audit it may also include information obtained from other sources like previous audits what do you mean by relevance what do you mean by relevance it says relevance deals with the logical connection deals with the logical connection with or bearing upon the purpose of the audit procedures so what do you mean by relevance you say something is relevant when it has a logical connection with the audit procedure that you are performing and where appropriate the assertion under which under consideration assertion we will learn in the coming days okay so relevance of information to be used as audit evidence may be affected by direction of testing It means what kind of testing that you are doing okay so see if the purpose of an audit procedure is to test for overstatement in the existence or valuation of accounts payable what do you mean by accounts payable accounts payable is creditors so if you are performing an audit procedure to test the overstatement to test the what overstatement in creditors testing the records recorded accounts payable may be a relevant audit procedure means you will have to test the creditors account that is the most relevant audit procedure most relevant audit procedures do you understand so you should understand for each and every uh, you know a situation the relevant procedure or relevant audit evidence might change so there is no concrete explanation of what is relevant it depends on the circumstances and facts of the case do you understand that is called as relevance now comes reliability reliability says reliability of information to be used as audit evidence and therefore the audit evidence itself is influenced by its source nature and circumstances under which it is obtained so they have given you five points here regarding reliability of audit evidence see the five points first point says the reliability of audit evidence is increased when it is increased when it is obtained from independent sources outside the entity what is this point it means external evidence is more reliable than internal evidence correct next what is the next point reliability of audit evidence that is generated internally is increased when the related controls or including those over its preparation and maintenance imposed by the entity are effective this is nothing but internal control will determine the reliability of which evidence internal evidence then evidence obtained directly by the auditor is more reliable than evidence obtained indirectly or by inference that means when you obtain evidence directly it is more reliable than obtained through the client next evidence in documentary form i repeat evidence in documentary form paper form electronic form etc is more reliable than obtained orally than obtained orally next evidence provided by 
original documents original documents is more reliable than evidence obtained through photocopies faces smileys documents which has been filmed digitized etc so i repeat so many things very 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 important reliability of audit evidence one of the most repeated question in your examination one of the most repeated question in your examination one of the most repeated question in your examination you understand reliability of audit evidence what is it reliability of audit evidence it is influenced by the source then sometimes by the nature sometimes by the way by which it is of circumstances under which it is obtained you understand that is reliability of audit evidence what is it what is it my students reliability of audit evidence i hope you are able to understand what we are learning we understand that audit evidence must be see from here this is what we are learning right now audit evidence must be dash and dash sufficient and appropriate sufficiency is the measure of quantity of audit evidence quantity is affected by three factors come on materiality risk of material misstatement uh, then uh, size and characteristics of population then um, then we understand appropriateness is the measure of quality of audit evidence quality is affected by two things relevance and reliability of audit evidence relevance means the importance of the audit evidence based on the circumstances based on the procedure that you are performing reliability is based on the source nature and other uh, you know methods by which you obtain the evidence so that's why we have five points for understanding reliability we say that evidence when it is written form is more reliable than oral external evidence is more reliable than internal internal evidence uh, reliability will increase depending upon the good internal control system that the entity maintains then evidence obtained directly by the auditor more reliable than obtained through the clients and finally an evidence which is uh, uh, obtained as an original document is more reliable than photocopies digital documents etc are you getting my point very 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 important to learn audit evidence must be dash and dash tell me dash and dash sufficient and appropriate i repeat it is sufficient and appropriate i am telling you lot of time this question has been asked in the exam make sure that you write properly okay fine now let's do a small exercise okay i have taught you so many things regarding audit evidence correct taught you so many things regarding audit evidence now from what is audit evidence okay then evidence must be sufficient appropriate i'll give you 5 minutes take your notebook and scribble whatever you remember on what we have learned till now please take your notebook scribble down whatever you remember of whatever we have learned till now whatever you remember evidence is the definitions whatever points 5 minutes i'll give you please do this exercise please do it quickly please do this exercise whatever we have learned till now please write it in the notebook scribble it down quickly now okay so you would have written uh, maybe you have not completed still it is okay okay now why did i tell you to write it why did i tell you to scribble down is because now what you have done is one of the best techniques which has helped me to score marks in theory papers It means one thing i felt during my studies where i went wrong in the initial stages of my learning was that i used to only study and sometimes recollect in my mind okay so what is happening is i am able to recollect what i study in my mind but then i understood there is a huge difference between recollecting in mind and writing it down somewhere because in the exam it is not that we are recollecting in our mind we are writing it down somewhere so there should be a coordination between the brain and your hands and it is when we start writing we tend to realize that we have not recollected so many points 
Because when we are just recollecting in our mind, we tend to feel that we remember most of the things. And we are confident and we move forward. But when we write it down in a paper, it gives us visual evidence that few points have been missed. Few things have gone unnoticed. I hope you are getting what I am trying to do here. So if you take a paper and keep on writing what you remember, whatever you have missed is what needs to be learned again. So it's like students what they do is they keep on repeating the whole thing again and again. In that case what happens is you are repeating things which is already there in your mind and it is already stuck in your mind. So even if you repeat that hundred times it will stay there or you don't repeat even one time it will still stay there because it is stuck in your mind. There are few points which has not been registered in your mind, which needs to be identified and learned very quickly and the gap must be filled so that you get the best marks in the exam. I hope that the exercise that we did is understood by you. Why did we do it? It's very, very important. I still remember this was one of the turning points in my studying area, studying time. One of the turning points. Especially sometimes what I used to do is when I have learned theory the previous day. Next day morning I used to get up, take a blank paper, white paper and scribble down whether I remember what I learned the previous day. And almost 70% I will remember. Some 30% what I forget. I tend to write it in a different color ink to get it registered in my mind. Different color ink to get it registered in my mind. You understand? I get it registered in my mind. Then I tend to write it again and see if, if I get time later in the evening or maybe the next day to see whether I still remember all the points. But this is something which needs to be done. Which perfectly needs to be done which a CA student lacks you know they never do it you write theory for the first time directly in your exam hall that is the guts that you have but that is not a good thing you need to test yourself from home find out the mistakes from home you understand that is very very important test yourself from home itself Okay, so please do this exercise every day. Will you do it? Yes or no? Will you do this exercise from today every day is my question. Will you do it? Yes or no? Okay, will you do it? Yes or no? Come on. Will you do it? Yes, sir. Thank you for the response. Now, please understand. Uh, please do it. Please do it. It's for your good. It's going to help you. You see the difference in your marks. You see the difference in your marks. You would be very happy to see the difference that you have in your marks. Take it from me. Listen, take it from me. You'll see the difference. I'm telling you, I am able to give you good techniques only because I did not cross the line in my first attempt. I did not cross the line in my first attempt. Okay. I even failed in theory paper in my first attempt. Do you understand? Law paper actually. I failed in that paper. So I have gone through examinations where I have failed. I have gone through examinations that I have got average mark. I have gone through examinations where I have scored the excellent mark 70 plus in theory ca final ca intermediate also do you understand so i have gone through all these so i clearly know when when did i get this what did i do then so it becomes easier for me to give you such advices because i know what different did i do to score the marks 
Okay, so this is was a turning point. Methods to obtain audit evidence. Next is methods. Now we know what is audit evidence. We know evidence must be sufficient and appropriate. We know what is sufficiency, what is appropriateness, what are the factors affecting this. Now next comes the next discussion of teaching you how to collect audit evidence. What will the auditor do to collect audit evidence? Now the first method that he may use to collect audit evidence is called as inspection. It is called as what? Inspection. So auditor can obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence by performing inspection. By performing inspection. Now the question is what is he inspecting? Okay, the question is what is he inspecting? He is inspecting the books of accounts. He is inspecting records. He is inspecting documents. So a lot of things that can be what inspected. But one thing that you have to take care, listen to me carefully is inspection is not confined to only books of accounts, records, documents. It also contains, I repeat, it also contains physical, physical examination. I repeat, it also contains physical examination of an asset. Please understand, this is what you forget. So, inspection is not confined to just books of accounts, records, documents, etc. It also includes physical examination of an asset. So you even inspect assets and you inspect, inspect records, documents, books of accounts. Are you getting my point? So inspection is of both books of accounts, records, documents as well as physical examination of asset. Now second one. After inspection comes inquiry. Inquiry. Now what do you mean by inquiry? What happens in an inquiry? What does the auditor do in an inquiry? What is the auditor doing in an inquiry? You tell me. Auditor is dash information. Fill in the blanks. Auditor is dash information. Inquiry is dash information from knowledgeable persons. Inquiry means dash information from knowledgeable persons. Come on. Dash information from knowledgeable persons. What does an auditor do in an inquiry? He will dash the information from knowledgeable persons. He will. Come on. Come on. What is the word? He will seeking information. Superb. What is the word? Seeking information. Seeking. Perfect. Seeking information. That is the word. Seeking information. Very, very important word. Seeking information of knowledgeable persons from within or outside the entity. Very, very important word is seeking. You understand? Please uh, 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 study the word seeking. Go to the important words in your notebook and please write seeking. Seeking. Do you understand? So, seeking information. Please, do, see, instead of seeking, don't write asking, getting. You know, so somebody said ask. That's what I'm saying. We'll have normal words like asking, getting in our mind. But institute wants this word from you. What is it called as? Seeking information. You understand? This is a, that is why I'm saying whenever you find a peculiar word, a good professional word, write it separately and keep. Today after breakfast two times, say seeking, seeking. Seeking, seeking. I told you. From yesterday, I have told you, please write down the important words that you find out separately and keep. So that you are able to see what, imagine, no, you write those words separately somewhere. Imagine in the notebook behind your right, you have written applicable financial reporting framework, materiality, material, misstatement, misstatement, reasonable assurance, seeking, Imagine you have written like this in your notebook and imagine reading these words before going to the exam hall or in the morning of the exam. You have read these words. What happens? The words which are there in your brain already but which would have been gone down 
due to new new things that you have learned when you read that page with all these important words your brain refreshes to these words then what happens in the exam hall you will be able to use these words in your answer are you getting my point otherwise what will happen is you will not be using the technical language in the exam so that is why i am telling you my students write the important words somewhere in your notebook and keep so that it can be it can be read sometimes whenever possible to refresh your memory with these words because these are the words that is required in your answer write it separately and keep do you understand fine so seeking information of knowledgeable persons from within or outside the entity and they say inquiries can range from formal written inquiries to informal oral inquiries so they clearly saying inquiries can range from formal written inquiries to informal oral inquiries so it is not confined to only formal written inquiries it can go to informal oral inquiries also and the next most important point in inquiry is inquiry does not end by seeking the information alone i repeat inquiry does not end just by seeking the information alone inquiry includes both seeking plus evaluation of responses evaluating responses very 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 important point that means the point says inquiry is not confined only to getting the information that is seeking the information inquiry also includes evaluating the responses evaluating the responses from the uh, whatever you have got from the process of inquiry so evaluating responses to inquiries is considered to be an integral part of the inquiry process i repeat it is considered to be an integral part of the inquiry process so please understand this is very very important evaluating responses fine evaluating responses next so inspection inquiry next comes confirmation 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 we we'll learn little later okay confirmation it is something called as external confirmation is actually what external confirmation discussed in sa 505 confirmation it is external confirmation confirmation okay next observation observation now what do you mean by observation listen to me carefully very important point of observation what do you mean by observation as you would know as you would know you tell me physical verification of inventory conducting physical verification of inventory is the responsibility of management or the auditor please tell me conduction of physical verification of inventory is the responsibility of management or the auditor conducting physical verification of inventory is the responsibility of management or the auditor whose responsibility it is it is a responsibility of the management correct it is a responsibility of the management the management needs to uh, do physical verification now somebody says auditor auditor now please understand my students the first thing that you have to understand is the auditor is not responsible for conduction of physical verification of assets it is not the auditor who requires to conduct physical verification of asset or inventory whatever it is it is the management who is responsible for conducting physical verification of assets inventories sir sir what is the auditor going to do 
ऑडिटर नीड्स टू एक्ट एस एन ऑब्जर्वर ही नीड्स टू लुक ही नीड्स टू बी लुकिंग एट दी प्रोसेस बीइंग परफॉर्म्ड ही नीड्स टू बी लुकिंग एट द प्रोसेस बीइंग परफॉर्म्ड बाय मैनेजमेंट बाय मैनेजमेंट he needs to be looking at the process being performed by management that is nothing but what observation that is the method of observation in observation auditor is required to observe look at the process being performed by management we need to be physically attending the verification process we should be physically attending the verification process superb we should be physically attending the verification process do you understand we need to be present on the day on which physical verification is conducted by the management physical verification is conducted by the management but please understand it is not our responsibility to conduct physical verification of inventory or asset it is the responsibility of the management and it is through the process of observation that the auditor obtains visual evidence with respect to with respect to the inventory's physical verification one more example i can give you regarding the fiscal uh, observation is that one more example that i can give you regarding the uh, fiscal verif- uh, sorry observation is that during the course of audit to understand the internal control system of an organization i repeat to understand the internal control system of an organization the auditor may use this method called as what observation to observe how the internal control is being what do you say how the internal control is being managed how the internal control is being taken care by the entity so to understand the effectiveness of the control system to understand what the internal control system is all about the auditor may observe the internal control system of the organization so that is why one of the methods to obtain audit evidence which is an visual evidence that you obtain here is observation is what observation so inspection inquiry confirmation observation now comes the fifth one it is called as re calculation is called as what recalculation now what do you mean by recalculation listen to me carefully recalculation is nothing but something which has already been calculated is again being calculated so who has already calculated it and kept the management so what is the auditor doing calculating it again that is recalculation calculating it again that is recalculation why is auditor calculating it again the reason by which auditor is calculating it again is to check the mathematical accuracy mathematical accuracy or arithmetical accuracy so the objective of the auditor while doing recalculation of something which has already been calculated is to check the mathematical accuracy is to check the mathematical accuracy of that particular of the of the transactions do you understand mathematical accuracy mathematical accuracy now so recalculation is only focusing on what mathematical accuracy it just wants to know whether the calculation is done pro- properly so mathematical accuracy next method of collecting audit evidence is reperformance reperformance what do you mean by reperformance reperformance is nothing but you are performing something which has already been performed by the management as part of their internal control process i repeat reperformance means where you are performing again something which has already been performed by the management already been performed by the management what is the example 
Example is BRS, Bank Reconciliation Statement. How does BRS becomes the example? Because the entity would have already prepared a BRS for their purpose. But sometimes what will sir, what will auditor do? He will prepare his own BRS. Not even going through what BRS has been is, uh, is uh, uh, prepared by the management. So he will not even focus on the BRS that the management has prepared. He will prepare his own BRS. Now this BRS that he performs again, that he prepares again, the peers that auditor performs again is basically a re-performance. He is performing independently, performing something which the management has already performed. So wherever the auditor is independently performing something which the management has already performed, that is called as re-performance. Sir, what is the difference between recalculation and re-performance? Simple. In recalculation, you are just focusing on the arithmetical accuracy. But re-performance has a bigger objective. You are re-performing the whole activity to see whether something has been missed out. Whether any transaction has been wrongly recorded. Do you understand? So to find out that re-performance is done. But in recalculation, you are not focusing on whether something has been missed out or not. There the focus is only on the calculation part. Now imagine I take a BRS and take a calculator and just calculate the BRS that they have given me. I am doing recalculation. At the same time when I am completely preparing BRS on my own, it is re-performance. I hope you are getting the difference. Do you understand? Something that I am doing just to check the mathematical accuracy, it is recalculation. Something that I am again doing to check whether anything is missed out, everything is taken care, nothing has been wrongly recorded. In that case, it is re-performance. It is re-performance. And last and the seventh method is nothing but analytical procedures. I repeat, analytical procedures. Analytical procedures. Where is analytical procedures discussed? It is discussed in SA 520. Chapter number 8 for new syllabus. Analytical procedures. Analytical procedures. Do you understand? So these are the 7 methods to obtain audit evidence. Tell me what are the 7 methods my students? One is inspection. Second is inquiry. Third confirmation. Fourth observation. Fifth recalculation. Sixth re-performance. Seventh analytical procedures. Come on everybody. Repeat. What are the seven methods? Come on. First method is inspection. Second is inquiry. Third is confirmation. Fourth observation. Fifth recalculation. Sixth re-performance. Seventh analytical procedures. Come on. What are the methods to obtain audit evidence? First one. Inspection. Second inquiry. Third confirmation. Fourth observation. Fifth recalculation. Sixth re-performance. Seventh analytical procedures. These are the seven methods to obtain audit evidence. In inspection, please focus on physical examination of asset. In inquiry, please focus on evaluating responses is also included. Not just seeking plus evaluating. Confirmation we are learning in SA 505. Observation, what is it? We are looking at a process being performed by management. Observation, we are looking at a process being performed by management. That is, best example is physical verification of asset, where we are not doing the physical verification, but we act as an observer to the process being performed by management. Recalculation is checking the arithmetical accuracy. Reperformance is you know, something like you are independently performing, which you have already performed. Analytical procedures, we will discuss in SA 520, where some analytical skills are used by the auditor. These are the seven methods to obtain audit evidence. Seven methods to obtain audit evidence. Now, these seven methods are used in the audit procedures that the auditor performs. Audit procedures that the auditor performs. Audit procedures. Audit procedures. That the auditor performs during the course of his audit. What are the audit procedures that the auditor performs? What are the audit procedures, my students, that the auditor performs? Now, please write this down in your notebook. Huh? 
first one is called as RAP. It is nothing but risk assessment, risk assessment procedure. Then you have FAP. It is nothing but further audit procedure. This FAP will be divided into two. First one is TOC. Test of control. Then SP. Substantive procedure. This SP has two procedures within it. One is TOD. Test of details of transaction. And comes SAP. Substantive analytical procedure. Substantive analytical procedure. Now, this is your complete syllabus. This is the audit procedures that the auditor performs for evidences. In these procedures, he will use these seven methods to collect the evidence. What are the procedures? It starts from RAP, that is risk assessment procedure. Then goes to FAP, that is the further audit procedure. That means whatever further audit procedure auditor wants to perform, it is performed after the performance of RAP, that is risk assessment procedure. So once the risk assessment procedure is done, then you go to the further audit procedures. In further audit procedure, you are doing two procedures. One is TOC, that is test of controls. Then SP, that is substantive procedure. In substantive procedure, you are doing two procedures. One is test of details of transaction, TOD. Then SAP, that is substantive analytical procedures. I repeat, substantive analytical procedures. You understand? So this is audit procedures in a very simple way to understand. It starts from RAP. Then you do your further procedures. In the further procedures, you are performing TOC and SP. In SP, you are doing both test of details as well as analytical procedures. Do you understand? And in these procedures is where you are applying those seven methods. What? Inspection, inquiry, confirmation, observation, recalculation, reperformance, analytical procedures. So these seven methods to collect audit evidence are used in this particular, what do you say, procedures that the auditor performs, these procedures. Do you understand? So you have to understand how it is applied. The seven methods are used in these procedures. That means in risk assessment procedure to collect audit evidence, you will need one of these, uh, some, uh, some of these seven methods. In further audit procedures, when you're doing test of controls, these are the seven methods that you can use. When you're doing substantive procedure, that is test of details, these are the seven methods that you can use. So these are the seven methods available which will help you to collect audit evidence. And you're collecting audit evidence while performing audit procedures. So audit procedures are risk assessment, further audit procedures and all these things. Are you able to understand? So please make sure that you're learning this properly. This particular thing is very, 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 very important from the examination perspective. What we have written here regarding the audit procedures. It is there in your chapter number three also. That is why I'm discussing. You understand? So it is there here. They have clearly given you the audit procedures. I'll show you audit procedures. 
see risk assessment procedure and other procedures that is further audit procedures other procedures is test of control substantive procedures test of controls is test of details analytical procedures and test of details again they have divided into vouching and verification that is test of transactions and test of balances you understand so this is one of the most important diagram because this makes you understand this is what the auditor is going to do he is going to do risk assessment other procedures all those things you understand this has to be read properly from the examination perspective fine examination perspective these test of controls nature of test of controls and all we'll see later here is where your methods is there see inspection then observation external confirmation then you have a recalculation reperformance analytical procedures inquiry an inquiry i told you this sentence is very important evaluating responses to inquiries is an integral part of the inquiry process evaluating responses to inquiry is an integral part of the inquiry process this is very 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 important sentence you understand this is what this has come for examination a number of times examination number of times please be a little careful this sentence evaluating responses to inquiries is an integral part of the inquiry process so seven uh, ways by which you can collect your audit evidence you understand collect your audit evidence and procedures this is procedures which you have to learn okay from the examination perspective very 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 important okay now audit evidence audit evidence what we have learned till now is almost uh, perfect regarding what is audit evidence uh, what in what is included in audit evidence then uh, what is sufficiency of audit evidence what is appropriateness of audit evidence then uh, how what are the factors affecting the sufficiency what are the factors affecting the appropriateness of audit evidence correct then we learned about uh, reliability of audit evidence relevance of audit evidence we learned various methods to obtain audit evidence almost seven methods clear every method was important then we had a general idea now about the audit procedures the total audit procedures that the auditor will perform okay so these are the idea that we have okay now now listen now as far as the discussion is concerned one thing that we have not discussed is sa 505 called as what external confirmation called as what external confirmation very important from the examination perspective external confirmation now what do you mean by external confirmation it is one of the ways by which you obtain audit evidence and as the name suggest you can see it is a confirmation obtained from external sources it is an external confirmation confirmation obtained from external sources okay so let's try to understand what the situation is all about okay what the discussion is all about regarding external confirmation now in a financial statement in a financial statement Now imagine there is a financial statement there is a company listen to me yeah there is a company called as nda limited nda limited okay now nda limited is a company now in that company's financial statement in that company's financial statement i am going through imagine what do you say the list of debtors i am going through the list of debtors nda limited is a company i am appointed as the auditor of nda limited now i am going through the debtors list of debtors of nda limited now in the list of debtors i find a name called as mr modi okay for rupees 25 lakhs So twenty-five lakhs is receivable from Mr. Modi. 
NDA Limited is a company. NDA Limited is a company. Imagine which deals with Ayurvedic products. Ayurvedic products. NDA Limited is a company which deals with Ayurvedic products. And you find that there is a debtor called as Mr. Modi who has to pay the company rupees 25 lakhs. 25 lakhs. Now, I am the auditor of NDA Limited. Now, for this particular debtors, debtor balance, I need audit evidence to make sure that it is true and fair. So, obviously, I will be doing inspection, inquiry, all those things I can do. What will the company provide me with? One, they may provide me with the sales copy of sales invoice to Mr. Modi of those products. And it is a credit bill. It's a credit bill. And imagine the bill is for 25 lakhs. So we are very clear that the bill is for 25 lakhs. They have given us the bill also. We have gone through the inventory. We have seen the inventory has been transferred to Mr. Modi. But still as an auditor, imagine I am not satisfied with the evidences that I have received. I feel it is not sufficient and appropriate. Somewhere I feel I need to contact this person who Mr. Modi. I need to contact this person and get the information directly from him so that I will be satisfied regarding this transaction. The auditor feels he wants to contact this person. I repeat, contact this person and obtain the evidence directly from him instead of obtaining it from the company. So the auditor now listen carefully. So the auditor wants to confirm some information directly with Mr. Modi. That means auditor will send some request to Mr. Modi and he would want Mr. Modi to directly communicate with the auditor. He would want Mr. Modi to directly communicate with the auditor. So, some information will be requested by the auditor to Mr. Modi and the auditor wants Mr. Modi to directly respond to the auditor. I repeat, it, the auditor does not want Mr. Modi to reply to NDA Limited and NDA Limited giving me that information. No, I want Mr. Modi to directly, directly give me the information. I want him to give me a direct response and that too I want it in writing, direct written response. I need Mr. Modi to give me a direct written response, direct written response. You understand? It could be in paper form, electronic form, any other medium. No issues. It should be a direct written response obtained by the auditor from the third party or the confirming party. This direct written response is called as external confirmation. This direct written response will be called as external confirmation. So please understand what is external confirmation? It is the direct written response that is obtained by the auditor from the third party. Please understand. Is external confirmation a reliable audit evidence? Tell me. Is external confirmation a reliable audit evidence? Is external confirmation a reliable audit evidence? What do you think? Is external confirmation a reliable audit evidence? What do you think according to you? Is it a reliable audit evidence? Let me tell you, it is a very much, very much reliable audit evidence. Why? You look at how the evidence is. Evidence is one, it is a directly obtained evidence. 
second it is a written evidence third it is a it is a external evidence so you can see if you can look into the evidence as such it is a directly obtained evidence it is a written evidence it is a externally obtained evidence so automatically the reliability of this evidence is very very high it's a highly reliable audit evidence and i hope you understand the external confirmation is the response that i receive are you getting my point the response is called as external confirmation what mr modi responds to me the response will be called as external confirmation called as what external confirmation so it is a direct written response that the auditor obtains you know sir direct written response that the auditor obtains from the third party called as the confirming party so where do you think these external confirmations will be used by the auditors it will be used in case of debtors then creditors then loans inventory held by third party accounts other than bills payable bills receivable so everywhere any situation which consists third parties which contains third parties there you will have external confirmation as one of the procedures to obtain audit evidence you understand so debtors creditors loans third parties all those things bills receivable bills payable all these situations you will find that auditor may use the method of what external confirmation auditor may use the method of external confirmation do you understand fine so this is the basic definition of what is external confirmation okay now the other points relating to external confirmation and the points of discussion of external confirmation we will do it in the next class because i have a little small assignment today so i'm leaving you a little early so let me tell all the students now this uh, free youtube lecture or revision lecture will end today from the next week uh, we'll have classes in the lexias platform only so any student who wants to enroll for the class please enroll for the class and uh, get in touch uh, regarding the fees and everything i will be updating in the uh, telegram group also in my whatsapp status i have discussed with the lexia team so you'll get the new update uh, most probably today okay so um, if you are wanting to continue with the classes please make sure that you get registered and uh, anybody has issues with payment of fees i know the situation is corona and lot of uh, financial uh, crisis that students are facing uh, so please let me know i can arrange for uh, payment in installments because we have, have classes for two to uh, it's almost for two months so i can arrange for slow payment of the money also of the fees also okay so please let me know uh, if there is any things like anything like that i want to serve the students help the students clear the examination that is why i have kept this morning batch in the uh, 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 morning batch as far as the book is concerned i am actually teaching from the institute material because because i'm telling you because uh, if you see right now couriering the book or all those things will not be practically possible so if there is any short notes kind of a thing i'll mail it to you and you can use it the revision material at the end i will mail it to you which you can use it rest we will learning directly from the textbook only do you understand that is why i'm teaching you from the institute material it is the best material you don't require any other book just focus on institute material and rtps and mtps that's it nothing more than that you understand so book you just forget learning from any other book it is just the material that we have to use okay so revision material i'll give you at the end uh, revision material to completely revise on the previous day that i will send it to you don't worry i'll give you a revision material okay so make sure that you are, you are uh, um using this opportunity the best uh, for uh, for your good and uh, so next week we'll meet uh, tuesday morning 6:30 and as i promised sunday we'll have the examination for the topics taken yesterday and today okay sunday we have the examination test paper for the topics taken yesterday and today okay so we have some good topics and because uh, uh, the topics are there we'll have a cumulative for this week only for sunday we have let's have a cumulative exams of the topics taken on last week as well as this week and let's make a good question paper do you understand so there's not much to learn so let's have the topics from last week as well as from the current week also current week also please um, uh, study well and write the test papers it is very very important to write the test papers to make sure that you are ready for the examination thank you so much see you next week bye